Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless jesus said as a sign of his coming and the end of the age there would be an increase in deception false christ who will deceive many wars and rumors of wars nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom famines pestilences earthquakes christian persecution apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. Jesus speaking to his disciples about the signs of his coming and the end of the age, declares this in Matthew 24, 12. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. The Bible tells us lawlessness is the violation of God's commandments, as we read in 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Sin will be so rampant and so commonplace in the last days that the love people once had for one another, for many, will be non-existent. In this prophecy, Jesus Christ is describing an ongoing breakdown in the relationship with God. And since people's love for God is waning, it will be evident in the way people treat one another as well. A symptom may be that the love toward other people is decreasing, but the real cause is that the relationship with God is cooling off. This is what we are witnessing in our world today. This morning, friends and families across the country are grieving after multiple mass shootings this weekend. Multiple victim from an active shooter. Yet. In Rochester Hills, Michigan, a man opened fire at a splash pad, unleashing 28 rounds. The attack left nine injured, including children, some seriously wounded. An eight-year-old uh, boy who uh, has a gunshot wound to the head. Police say the suspect later shot himself and are investigating his motive. It was heartbreaking, saddening. Devastating. Nothing like this has ever happened around this area. While in Round Rock, Texas, police are searching for a shooter who killed two and injured more than a dozen others at a Juneteenth celebration. These folks could care less about someone's life and took someone's life and, and on a day we're here to celebrate community. And at least eight people were injured by a shooting at a pop-up party in Methuen, Massachusetts, with two victims in critical condition. Here we see again gun violence that's striking at the heart of a community. So far this year, there have been 225 mass shootings in the U.S., according to the Gun Violence Archive. It was a violent weekend across the U.S. where police say two people died, 14 others hurt in a shooting on Saturday at a Juneteenth celebration in Round Rock, Texas. That suspect still on the loose. And also on Saturday, nine people, including two young boys, wounded by a gunman who fired at families trying to keep cool at a neighborhood splash pad in a suburb of Detroit. <laughs> Chaos at a community splash pad in Rochester Hills, Michigan, Saturday. The sheriff says 42 year old Michael Nash fired at least 28 shots at families trying to cool off just after 5 p.m. Grabbed my medical kit out of my car and came up and tried to help people. At least nine people were wounded, including a husband and wife who were struck seven times. Friends say they were shielding their two young children. A mom and her eight year old are both in critical condition. A four year old from the same family was also shot. And it was incredibly random. Rochester Hills mayor says a city employee's wife was also injured. She was uh, uh, shot in the wrist, uh, a broken arm, uh, and then another uh, bullet entered uh, the abdomen, exited out the back. She's going to be fine. Police say the gunman who struggled with mental health challenges calmly walked back to his car after the shooting and drove to a home less than a half mile away. Police surrounded the house. They say the shooter killed himself. A handgun and a semi-automatic weapon were recovered. 
there's anger that, that some individual would choose your city and your splash pad to carry out this act. Uh, and then there's mostly just care and concern. Lord, I pray uh, for Mayor Barnett. On Sunday, the community joined for a prayer vigil at a local church. This as a team in protective gear worked to clean the splash pad. The mayor vows to reopen it after Saturday's mass shooting. It's the exact antithesis of what you design a splash pad and what a splash pad's purpose is for, and that's to gather community and to celebrate families and to create memories. Now, this is the same community still reeling from the Oxford High School shooting that killed four students back in 2021 in this same county. Sadly, there was another mass shooting overnight, this one in Texas during a Juneteenth event. Such devastation over at a Juneteenth celebration, this one happening in Round Rock, Texas. That's just outside of Austin. This is where officials say two people were killed, six hospitalized including two children. Now, overnight, this is what we're learning from police. They're sharing that a deadly fight broke out. Police alleging that at least one suspect took out a gun and fired. Police say multiple victims were then struck by gunfire, including bystanders. Now, two people dying from their wounds. The shooting happening at the Old Settlers Park near the concert stage. This was with a packed crowd where the community of Round Rock, Texas was actually hosting their second annual Juneteenth celebration. Now, at this point of the investigation, it is early on and police just do not know how many shooters were there because all of those suspects at this point are at large. The Apostle Paul in his epistle to Timothy tells us in the last days society would be in a total immoral meltdown. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. Chicago police say seven people have been killed and at least 35 others hurt in shootings this weekend. A massive number in such a short time frame. 24 people were shot in Chicago between midnight and five o'clock this morning. One of the mass shootings captured on surveillance video. Sunday night, hundreds of young people gathered socially in the street near Pulaski and Iowa in Humboldt Park. They swarmed this Shell gas station. Employees tell me they had to lock the doors because of the sheer masses. As the crowd continued to grow, gunfire broke out just before 1 a.m. Hundreds of people seen running for cover. From another angle, you can see people ducking behind cars to avoid the gunfire. The gunman was not captured on these surveillance cameras, but at least one other person at the gathering did have a gun. A 15 year old girl was shot in the neck and taken to Stroger Hospital in serious condition, while four other victims with gunshot wounds, ranging from 18 to 35 years old, were taken to various hospitals in fair condition. This incident, one of two mass shootings that happened overnight. Seven people were also shot near 60th and Winchester in West Englewood. Those victims also in their 20s and 30s. Just chaos, basic chaos. With the horrible mass shootings taking place weekly in the United States, we need to answer the question, why do mass shootings keep happening in America? What does this meaningless violence mean? Will it get worse and worse as the time of Christ's return draws near? If we think that things are going to get better and that mankind will solve this problem for less violence, we are fooling ourselves. The Bible indicates otherwise. The simple answer to why do mass shootings keep happening in America is God is being expelled from the essence of American society. Through Supreme Court decisions starting in 1962, God is being expelled from America. 1962, Engel vs. Vital, The removal of prayer in public schools by the Supreme Court. 1963, Abington School District vs. Shemp, The removal of Bible reading in public schools by the Supreme Court. 1973, Roe vs. Wade, legalized abortions by the Supreme Court. Although Roe v. Wade was overturned by the Supreme Court on June 24, 2022, there have been over 60 million abortions in the United States. 2013, United States v. Windsor. The Supreme Court struck down the Defense of Marriage Act, DOMA stated, 
that one man should be married to one woman. Doma is biblically supported according to Genesis 2.24, which says, Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. 2015. Overfell v. Hodges, the Supreme Court case that ruled in favor of same-sex marriages. Contrary to the Lord's commands, America has made it illegal to teach about God and to pray to Him in public schools. America has made it legal to murder unborn children and has legalized homosexuality in the form of God's sacred institution, marriage. This is what a nation looks like when they tell God they no longer want or need Him. Since America will not recognize God as the creator of all things, follow His commandments, and give Him the glory that only He deserves, He has left this nation to its own destruction. Proverbs 16.6 says, In mercy and truth atonement is provided for iniquity, and by the fear of the Lord one departs from evil. There is no fear of God in America, and the result is a society full of evil doers. When we are choosing to hold on to sin, rather than repent and change, God will not hear our prayers, as we read in Isaiah 1.15. When you spread out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you, even though you make many prayers. I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Proverbs 28.9 says, One who turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer is an abomination. America continues to do evil and disregard God's moral law, make up a God of our own liking, and continue to do what is right in our own eyes. America continues to lie, steal, blaspheme God's name, fornicate, commit adultery, look at pornography, covet what is not ours, and take human life. Jeremiah 30.12 says, for thus says the Lord, your affliction is incurable, your wound is severe. As a nation, I think America may have reached the point in time where God will no longer hear our prayers because our sin is incurable. Crime so out of control, looters are back, and there's not even a reason to riot. <laughs> The whole mob recorded the rampage. One arrest. In Seattle, where they told Johnny there's no crime, there's gang shootouts in residential neighborhoods. In New York, maniacs with knives are now lunging at cops. Take all the knives! And in San Francisco, it was just another day that ended in the letter Y. sideshow with fires, burnouts, and Roman candles. Those are fun. Blatant and outrageous crimes occurring on a daily basis, coast to coast, but Biden's running for re-election, so the FBI is telling you crime's down. Attorney and retired NYPD Inspector Paul Morrow. Paul, the FBI comes out and says, crime is way down. Is that true? No. All right, so let's just break it out in a very simple way, just from the get-go. 40% of the nation's police departments don't report up to the FBI with their crime numbers. Oh. <laughs> and what a coincidence. Let's do the roll call. New York, L.A., Chicago, Baltimore, Washington, D.C., which is federal itself, they don't report to the FBI. <laughs> Consequently, what is it all, what do you all have in common? These are all big blue cities that have high crime rates, and those numbers are not going into the UCR. That's what they call FBI UCR crime reports. Furthermore, the FBI has a habit of trying to extrapolate those numbers, right? Now, nothing's more dull than statistics, but it's interesting when they do. For instance, this quarter, when Joe Biden is claiming violent crime is down, he's focusing on murders. Murders are down at the lowest rate, going down, et cetera. Okay, the NYPD and the FBI murder number for this year are different by 44%. Oh, wait a second. <laughs> and what an accident. It looks like the New York City number is a little bit higher than the FBI is telling oh, you. Oh, okay. And by the way, they use the same definition. So it's not like the devil's in the details. It's the same murder definition. They're off by 44%. You can't trust these numbers. Just consider this. The videos you just showed, most of what you just showed, 
would not be captured in any of the crime numbers that we hear. Why not? Because that was a, a knife attack on a police officer. Uh, we saw, I believe, a shootout in a residential neighborhood. That's legitimately classified as a shooting. Yeah, that, they probably got that as a, as a uh, but for instance, in New York, for instance, you got to hit somebody with that for it to be a shooting incident. All right. There's all Wait, I can empty my clip, but if I miss, they don't count that. Yeah, that's right. So <laughs> it's, a, it's just, and look, the bottom line is quality of life yeah. is not captured in any of the FBI numbers. And if you live in a blue city, walk outside and use your eyes. One of the many signs that we're living in the end times is the epidemic of wickedness and violence that is sweeping the world today. Jesus tells us when society parallels the days of Noah, he will return as we read in Matthew 24, 37 through 39. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. So what was going on in Noah's day that parallels our day? To find out the answer, we need to go back to the book of Genesis 6, 5-13. through 13. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God, and Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. There is no doubt about the hour in which we live being the season for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ as we link Matthew 24, verses 12 and 37 through 39 with 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. The Bible describes our day very clearly from these scriptures. The condition of wickedness and violence that caused the earth to be destroyed in Noah's day is the same condition our earth is in today. Dragging the region to destruction. That's how the IDF describes Hezbollah's relentless attacks on northern Israel. It warns the terror group's actions could have devastating consequences. Well, over the weekend in Gaza, Israel lost 12 soldiers within 24 hours. Meanwhile, the IDF declared a pause in fighting in some areas to allow for the transport of humanitarian aid. Israel is warning that Iranian-backed Hezbollah is risking all-out war. This is in response to last week's intense rocket attacks, the worst of the war so far. Hezbollah's increasing aggression is bringing us to the brink of what could be a wider escalation, one that could have devastating consequences for Lebanon and the entire region. Since October 7th, Hezbollah has fired more than 5,000 projectiles at Israeli civilians, forcing the evacuation of nearly 100,000 Israelis. Hagari says Iran is behind it all. Iran's terror proxies continue to drag the region to destruction. Israel will continue fighting against Iran's axis of evil on all fronts in Gaza in Lebanon, in other fronts. Avraham Levine of the Alma Center told CBN News since the beginning, most of the world has been ignoring the Hezbollah attack on northern Israel. We're talking about a country that's uh, supported uh, with good uh, connections in Europe, with France, good connections with the United States that supports the Lebanese army, yet there's no pressure on the country to stop, eliminate, or even slow down this attack on the northern front. The attacks are devastating parts of northern Israel, causing huge fires in the summer heat and dryness. We're talking about thousands of acres, maybe up to 15,000 acres in the north, all across the western Galilee, northern Galilee, and the northern Golan Heights, all from Hezbollah uh, shooting towards the forests, uh, exploiting the situation for their benefit. In the south, the IDF suffered severe losses in the fighting in Gaza. Twelve Israeli soldiers were killed in separate incidents within 24 hours over the weekend, eight of them when their armored personnel carrier was hit in an explosion. 
In an effort to help Gaza's beleaguered citizens, the IDF says it will take a daily pause in fighting in parts of the southern Gaza Strip to help make sure humanitarian aid can get in. The Israel police, whose unit led the rescue of four hostages on June 8th, released body cam video of Israeli forces under heavy gunfire while rescuing female hostage Noah Argamani, telling her, we're taking you home. <laughs> Sunday, Prime Minister Netanyahu announced the dissolution of the war cabinet formed to manage the war against Hamas and Hezbollah as part of the agreement with Benny Gantz when he joined the coalition government. Netanyahu says Gantz's resignation makes it unnecessary and he'll make decisions with the defense minister and key cabinet ministers. As a sign of his coming and the end of the age, Jesus declares, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, see that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. The prophets of the Old Testament prophesied of these future military conflicts in Isaiah 17:1, in which Damascus, Syria will be destroyed in a single night. Jeremiah 49, the prophecy of Alam, which could infer an Israeli attack upon Iran's nuclear program. Psalm 83, in which the Muslim nations that border Israel will mount an attack on Israel in order to cut them off from being a nation. Ezekiel 38 and 39, known as the War of Gog and Magog. In this prophecy, a coalition of nations led by Russia, Iran, and Turkey will attack Israel in the last days in order to take Israel's wealth. Tonight, powerful thunderstorms and high winds targeting millions from D.C. to New York to Boston. Dangerous driving conditions right in the middle of the evening commute. But what we're concerned about, of course, damaging wind gusts, localized flooding, downpours, you name it. It's the same system that spawns seven tornadoes in the Midwest overnight. These buildings in the tiny northeast Missouri town of Ewing ripped to shreds. Meanwhile, waterlogged South Florida racing for up to five more inches of rain after more than two feet already. Dead cars everywhere. Tow trucks have been working around the clock. This one picking up this car in North Miami. But down the block, there are at least another dozen stalled out cars, and that's just on one street. Families still trapped in neighborhoods that look like lakes. First responders in high water vehicles seen leading families from these flooded homes this morning. Oh, wow. Look how much water is still inside his house. So a lot of things got damaged. This is me trying to save what I can. I mean, we're still talking about. That's a good one. That's three? like three inches right here. Yeah. Jamin Reyes has lived in this North Miami neighborhood for 11 years. You're frustrated. No. Yeah. You know, I keep my cool, but this is every year, man. Every year is the same thing. I've damaged so many things and I had to throw a lot of things away. And then when I replace them, they get damaged again. I'm sorry, man. Yeah, no, it's bad. It's, it's bad. Psalm 917. The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. The wildfire raging north of Los Angeles. The post fire is spreading rapidly, already burning thousands of acres and forcing more than a thousand people to evacuate. This is one of 12 fires burning across the state. This one exploding overnight, partly because of that wind. Firefighters struggling to gain containment. They had to evacuate about a thousand campers. And I want to give you a sense of how fast this fire burned. The owners of this auto repair shop say that every single car you see here here burned in five minutes. This morning, the race is on to stop multiple wildfires scorching Southern California. In Los Angeles County, the so-called post fire burning over 22 square miles, forcing at least 1,200 people to evacuate, including a thousand campers, with many more warned that they may also have to leave. I've never seen anything like it, and it was really scary. The Miller family was celebrating Father's Day on Pyramid Lake when they received orders to leave. My vision was getting blurry because of all the smoke while I was boating around the boat, and it just, I hardly could see. As of this morning, the blaze that began on Saturday is only 2% contained. One of the key factors that we have that are playing into the severity of this fire are the heavy wind situation right now. Hundreds of firefighters responding to the emergency. Using helicopters and planes to drop water and flame retardant, this wildfire is one of at least a dozen fires burning across the state. Our neighborhood and most of Santa Rosa, Windsor, all that is just inundated with smoke. 
In Sonoma County, the Point Fire is 15% contained, burning over a thousand acres. And in Lancaster, crews fully containing the Max Fire, but not before it incinerated some structures and vehicles. Cal Fire now calling this an intense start to the fire season. They're saying that, ironically, it's the rains over the past two years that have created all of this brush that is now turbocharging this fire. It's a mad dash for water in New Delhi. Acute water shortages and record-breaking temperatures mean people are scrambling for however much they can get. In this neighborhood in South Delhi, water is available for a few hours at a time, but only every second day. 60-year-old Umvati and seven of her family members live in the Okla slum under one roof. There simply isn't enough water to go around. We get tap water every other day. It comes for a very short period. Sometimes we get it, some days we don't. We have to buy mineral water or call for a tanker. If the borewell is functional, we try to use that. Far from the comfort of air conditioning or even the shade, many Indians are forced to work outdoors, facing the brunt of searing temperatures. Doctors are raising an alarm. This rickshaw driver has little option but to try and make a living while the heat is keeping many of his potential customers at bay. If I don't work, then what will my kids eat and what will I eat? If I sit at home for two months, it's not like the government is going to pay me any pension. Chandra Bhushan is an environmental planner and one of India's foremost climate change experts. He says the country has never faced this level of sustained heat. It is a pretty prolonged period of heat wave, extended period of heat wave, about 24 days of heat wave uh, that we have experienced. So we will break the record of the duration of heat wave uh, in this country this year. Health officials say about 25,000 cases of heat stroke have been reported nationwide, with nearly 60 people having died over the past three months. The seven-year tribulation is fast approaching this world, and the news headlines prove it. God in His grace and mercy is trying to shake the world out of His complacency. We are currently living in a time Jesus refers to as the birth pains. Jesus is likening last day's events to a woman in labor. The closer we get to Jesus' second coming, last day's signs and calamities will become more frequent and more intense. Following the rapture of all the true Christians to heaven, the Bible warns that the wrath of God will be poured out on an unbelieving and unrepentant world. One of the judgments described in the book of Revelation includes extreme heat, as we read in Revelation 16, 8, and 9. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire, and men were scorched with great heat. And they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues, and they did not repent and give him glory. The Liangma River in central Beijing wasn't intended to be a place for swimmers. But it's become popular with locals seeking refuge from a heat wave which has enveloped the city this week, with some areas experiencing temperatures of more than 40 degrees. This year it's become so hot much earlier than Europe. Coming here is a good way to escape the heat and get some relief. Authorities have told people to reduce time spent outdoors. Pregnant women and the elderly have been warned of the risk of heat stroke. Pedestrians and cyclists are doing their best to protect themselves from the scorching sun. The capital is not alone in experiencing this sweltering heat. Soaring temperatures have struck all over the country's north, from the eastern province of Shandong to Xinjiang in the far west, breaking national records for the usual temperature at this time of year. Authorities in Hebei and Henan provinces have issued a red and orange alert, the second and most severe warnings for high temperatures. Outdoor cleaners are replaced by mist cannon trucks to cool down streets and control dust. In Xinjiang, the 42-degree heat wave didn't deter tourists from visiting a site called Flaming Mountain. A thermometer baking under the sun showed the temperature of this steel at 75 degrees Celsius. I have never had this feeling before, like being roasted in a furnace is an unforgettable experience. China's National Climate Center has warned of more hotter than average days to come this summer, linking the trend to the El Nino weather pattern. Scientists say climate change is also to blame. China is the world's biggest emitter of greenhouse gases and has been experiencing months of extreme weather. 
This unseasonably hot June follows China's hottest May on record and one of its coldest winters. Luke 12:54 through 56 Then he also said to the multitudes, Whenever you see a cloud rising out of the west, immediately you say, A shower is coming, and so it is. And when you see the south wind blow, you say, There will be hot weather, and there is. Hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky and of the earth, but how is it you do not discern this time? Jesus was rebuking the multitudes for not recognizing the times they were living in. Jesus, the promised Messiah, was standing right there before them, and they didn't even know it. If the multitudes of Jesus' day missed Jesus' first coming, how much more important is it for us today to discern the times we live in and make sure we don't miss the signs of His second coming? Are you discerning the times? The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world, as we know it, is near. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised Him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with Him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.